All right. Well, I think we are just about to go live here. Uh, welcome everyone to the latest edition of LSM Live. We're going to go ahead, we're going to take about 10 minutes, maybe even longer to uh, just uh, wait for everybody to come on in. So uh, join the live chat, say hi, let's interact with each other. This is going to look a little bit different than we're used to, so hopefully uh, it will be a good experience for you. Um, as you can see, I have a little bit less decor on the fireplace mantle today, but I did have to, uh, A, make sure I have the trusty giraffe here in honor of uh, Kevin Smith. And then, of course, I had to make sure that I represented the greatest alma mater of all time, the South Dakota State University. Go Jackrabbits. Uh, so if you're into North Dakota State, I'm, I'm sorry. Wyatt Brown, if you're watching, I'm sorry. Uh, but we'll go ahead. Oh, Jensen's welcome. So glad that you could join us today. Boberg's welcome too. We're super excited to have you. Uh, we are, like I said, we're just going to wait for about 10 minutes or so. We're going to make sure people get on, but this is going to be a little bit different of a time for us because we are going to uh, have fun. We're going to banter and discuss and, and enjoy uh, the company, kind of have a good hangout time. If you will, Ryan, hello, welcome to LSM Live today. We're super excited to have you. Um, who here can tell me um, if you've had dinner yet, um, or if you had dinner yet tonight, uh, what was the best thing that you ate? I'll wait for the responses to come in. Oh, you know what? I'm going to do this here. My internet seems to be, uh, it says my internet is uh, is not doing so hot. Charity, welcome. Super excited to have you with us today. Cartwrights, welcome. Thanks for joining us today. Naps, welcome. Great to have you with us as well. Uh, we just asked the question, what uh, was the best thing you've had for dinner if you've eaten it so far? It looks like, okay. Mmm, um. Laura, that sounds, that sounds amazing. Um, actually, right now, it seems like on my end, we're having a little bit poor video feed. Uh, let me know in the comment section if uh, the video is working out well for you or if you're having issues with it. I might try to restart the stream if enough people are having issues. But uh, John, welcome. Super excited to have you. Ooh, grilled marinated chicken. Ah, oh, Boberg's. That sounds delicious. Wesley, chili. Sounds good too. Ella Young, welcome. We're super excited to have you for LSM Live. Ooh, Jensen's cheesecake. That's like right up my sister's alley. She's a cheesecake fanatic. So uh, shout out to Grace Erickson if you're watching it. Madre Erickson if you're watching this too. Big ups to the homies. Sweet. Okay. So, so far, so good. Wonderful. I guess uh, if you're just joining us, we are going to uh, wait a little bit longer. This is going to be a more of a hangout session for us uh, where we get to dive into some of your questions based on what scripture says. And uh, we will go uh, from there. Awesome. Ooh, John, sounds like you're having uh sounds like you're having a party after LSM. Uh, Allegra's welcome. Super excited to have you. Uh Naps, thank you so much. And Cartwrights, thanks for the video feedback. I appreciate it. Uh yeah, I don't know why it's saying that it's it's giving me some errors, so hopefully it works okay. Um ooh, New York strip. That that sounds really good right now. I uh I just recently had a steak from Applebee's. Uh, they're actually, you can get one surprisingly cheap if you do the two for 22 menu. And uh, let me tell you, whoever was cooking that night knows how to make a good steak. Ooh, pizza. That's the way to do it. Um, how about this? Uh, here's another good mixer question for you. Um, ooh. 
feel like I should the the I don't know if the the families of LSM are ready to be introduced to my mixer questions. Um, ooh, if you could if you could be in charge of any zoo exhibit, which zoo exhibit would you be in charge of? So what what exhibit at Safari North or if you're from the cities like me, the Como Zoo or the Minnesota Zoo? Como Zoo represent uh, one of the greatest of all time. But if you could own a zoo, ex or run a zoo exhibit, what one would you like to run? And that can be animals, decorations, whatever it is. Ooh, cheesy taco pasta. That is also, sounds really good. I'm excited, I've got some lasagna in the fridge that I'm super excited to dig into. Oh man, I think everything is working all right so far, which is great. Okay, so we know that, see, Marcus, I'm still interested to know where you're actually from, because last week you told us that you're from Odessa, but now you magically know Brent Costello, so I'm very curious as to figure out your identity, but it uh, gives me something to do during quarantine, so that should be great. Oh, we're waiting for Aaron Cartwright's response. Um, Ah, uh, polar bears. I suppose, John, that would be a sweet, uh, that would be a sweet exhibit to do up in Alaska, especially with a camera, is it, um, Alaska Anchorage, that's the Nanooks, and their mascot's a polar bear, I think, um, because I know one of them's the sea wolves, and I couldn't remember if it's Fairbanks or, um, Anchorage, uh, UA. Ooh, dolphins, that would be sweet. I will save you and spare you from trying to do a dolphin impression, so I, uh, I won't do that, but I think that would be a great exhibit to uh, to do as well. Ah, uh, parakeets, nice bowbirds. That sounds like a pretty uh, sounds like a fun exhibit. Plus, I feel like parakeets are much more low maintenance than like other birds. You know, oh, penguins. You could you imagine if you did like a penguin prom? You know, like you put little bow ties. On. I mean, like they're already dressed up in their tuxedo feathers, and then you just put a little bow tie on them. Oh man, that would be sweet. Um, oh, Aaron says, uh, birds, oh, and then, yeah, Molly, not even surprised that you chose otters and seals, but I think that one's sweet, too, especially because, like, seals are so popular in terms of, like, drawing crowds because they do all those cool tricks and stuff. Oh, Charity, that's, uh, giraffes are sweet, especially, like, I don't know if you've ever, uh, paid to go to Safari North and you pay like $5 to feed the giraffes and then like they feed you or you feed them and then they become your best friends and so they like lick your face and oh it's great. The frog exhibit that's yep I feel like that's right up your alley Laura um and I feel like it would be kind of a fun it'd be fun to to see all of the different types of frogs because there's so many that we don't know about and there's only like just a handful in Minnesota that we really get to see on a regular basis. Um, oh yay, the video health is back up and running. That's wonderful. Uh, exhibit that has ravens in it. Oh, so like a bird exhibit. That'd be a sweet one, Andrew. Um, could put, uh, could put like actual ravens and then you could put Edgar Allan Poe ravens and then you could put Baltimore ravens and yeah, that'd be a sweet exhibit. Ah, uh, thank you, John. Nanooks are Fairbanks. Sea wolves are Anchorage. There we go. I had uh, I had a good friend of mine. Actually, I had multiple friends who played. Um, so in hockey, there are a couple of different. There's like junior teams, and then there are um, there's like different levels of junior hockey that you can basically play in after you go to high school, and even when you go to high school. And one of my, or I had a couple of good friends, excuse me, who played for uh, the Anchorage, um, the Anchorage NAHL team, and so they uh, they got a lot of sweet swag from the college up there. So that's probably how I'm more familiar with it than anything else. All right, we're going to take just one more minute here to uh, to welcome everybody in, and then we will go ahead and get started with everything. It's going to be just a very low key time. Um, taking some time. Hey, I wanted to make sure that I got to spend some time with you because this is one of the highlights of my week. Love being able to interact with 
um, all of our students uh, during the course of the week when I can, um, especially during this time. It's definitely uh, life-giving, um, but wanted to also make sure that I took some time to focus on um, some of our summer stuff as well. So that is what I've been doing this week, uh, getting ready for missions and some other things like that. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, probably got about like 20 more seconds. So hopefully, uh, hopefully you have enjoyed uh, this week's edition of Welcome to LSM Life. And then we will go ahead and get started here. Sweet. Uh, well, again, if you are just joining us today, welcome to LSM Live. Uh, we are super excited to have you, and we know that we'll get a number of different uh, folks tuning in at uh, various times. I know uh, life, uh, life doesn't stop, life doesn't slow down just because we're in the midst of quarantine, so the fact that you're joining us today is really exciting, and we really appreciate that you're joining us today. Wanted to let you know for our hangout time today, we are going to be talking about and having a kind of a, a fun interaction between myself and all of you on the live chat, but we want to answer your questions or discuss different topics that are on your brain and your heart uh, related to life, related to scripture, God, all of that stuff, um, because we know that um, we can only cover a limited amount of stuff in the time we have during normal LSM. So we're going to take some time to cover some different things that you might have questions about. So I want you to be thinking about questions that you have. And if you're just like, hey, I want to know more about this or hey, what about this? You know, and then let's have a fun dialogue about it. Um, but be thinking of those questions as we're playing our game. And then we will go from there. So let me go ahead and pull our game up for... All right, can everybody hear me now? Sorry about that. Gandalf or King Solomon? Gandalf, the timeless character of the Lord of the Rings series for all of you Lord of the Rings nerds like me, and King Solomon, uh, who was the wisest king of Israel. He was the son of David, asked God for wisdom when he could have anything, and uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to play this game. So let's go ahead. Ooh. You seem to be experiencing a technical difficulty. I will handle this in just a second here. Excellent. There we go. <clears throat> Even a fool is wise in his own eyes. Even a fool is wise in his own eyes. Did Gandalf say that? Or did King Solomon say that? And I'll tell you what, I will give you bonus points for this game if you can tell me one of the following things. If the answer is Gandalf, if you tell me whether it was Gandalf the Grey or Gandalf the White, I will go ahead and I will give you uh, a bonus point. If it's the answer is King Solomon, and you tell me what book it was written in or is found in um, of, the, of Scripture, then we will gladly... Uh, give you a bonus point for that as well. Uh, even a fool is wise in his own eyes. Who believes they know the answer to this question? Oh, 
All right. Go ahead and uh, keep the answers. There we go. Some are coming in here. Uh, even a fool is wise in his own eyes. Do we think Gandalf said that or King Solomon said that? Got two votes for Solomon and one vote for Gandalf. Oop, now it's split down the middle. Does anybody else have a favorite Lord of the Rings character? Ah, uh, Colton Doles, welcome to the chat. Glad you're uh, glad you're shooting for the moon right away. All right, take like 30 more seconds to go ahead and get those uh, get those answers in. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at what the answer... It was King Solomon. It was King Solomon. Excellent work uh, to everyone who guessed King Solomon correctly. Uh, if you guessed Gandalf, don't worry. We still have a couple more rounds of this, so we can play uh, to win the game still. A merry heart makes for a cheerful countenance. A merry heart makes for a cheerful countenance. Do we believe that Gandalf or King Solomon said that? Lexi, welcome to the chat. We're super excited to have you on LSM Live today. A merry heart makes for a cheerful countenance. Man, let me tell you, it is so nice that the sun is still out right now. I don't like the birds that are close to my chimney, because um, the last time that happened, one got stuck in the chimney, and Katie Sawyer had to come and uh, get the get the bird out of our of our chimney. Uh, God bless that woman. But uh, I really do like that the sun is out, and hopefully you get a chance to uh, to get some vitamin D in your system. We'll go ahead and we'll continue to uh, to wait. Who do you think said a merry heart makes for cheerful countenance, Gandalf or King Solomon? We'll wait for just another second. Oh, wow, we got like seven more people to watch LSM Live. This is crazy. Oh, that's fun. Oh, well, we will go ahead and we will um, take a couple more seconds here to get some answers in. Five, four, three, two, one. It was King Solomon again. It was King Solomon again. Excellent work to everyone who guessed him correctly. Uh, let's go ahead and see what our next quote is. Uh, hopefully, we can actually uh, get a Gandalf quote here. But you know, I'm all about I'm all about King Solomon over here. That's my dude. Making sure that. Uh, kids go to the right mom and making sure that, uh, you know, he just does a bunch of great stuff up until he decides not to follow Jesus anymore. Many that live deserve death, and many that die deserve life. Can you give it to them? Many that live deserve death, and many that die deserve life. Can you give it to them? Was that Gandalf or King Solomon? We'll go ahead, we'll play, uh, after this question, we'll play two more rounds of this, and so we'll have five in total, but uh, again, be thinking about what kind of questions or topics you want to talk about today. Feel free to ask them in the chat uh, when we get to that point, and we will do our best to answer your questions. Um, they can be 
serious, they can be funny, they can be anything in between. We just want to hear your questions and we want to talk about them uh, today. Many that live deserve death and many that die deserve life. Can you give it to them? <laughs> ah, Colton Dolls, you're a legend. 15 more seconds. It was Gandalf. It was, and it was Gandalf the Grey when they are entering into the mines of Moria. And I should say, um, uh, Carity did, uh, did deserve some credit for the last one she was able to give not just the book of the Bible, she was able to give the actual complete scripture reference for our previous uh, question for King Solomon. So excellent work to uh, Charity, excellent work to Colton for giving some of the uh, some of the more specific pieces to that. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the next question. All of the rivers run to the sea, yet the sea is not full. All of the rivers run to the sea, yet the sea is not full. Did Gandalf say that, or did King Solomon say that? You know, I was really tempted to uh, play a this or that game, which, you know, if you're a student, you know, is the ones are the ones where we uh, have you go from side to side to pick your preference. You know, do you like this or do you like that? I was really tempted to play that today and have you guys take pictures of you moving across your living rooms as you're watching this, but I decided that that would probably be a technological nightmare, so we decided to play this instead. All of the rivers run to the sea, yet the sea is not full. Gandalf or Solomon? Take about 10 more seconds to, uh, to collect answers. It was King Solomon, the dude, the man, the myth, the legend. All right, got one more after this. This is our last one here, excuse me, so... Uh, despair is only for those who see the end beyond all doubt. Despair is only for those who see the end beyond all doubt. Was that Gandalf or was that King Solomon? Uh, welcome. We have one new viewer. Uh, so welcome, whoever that is, don't know, but super excited that you've joined us today. Oh, they disappeared. I must have scared them off. Heard it. Ugh. Ooh, Lexi, giving us the giving us the citation for the verse as well. Awesome sauce. Roberts family, welcome. Super excited to have you with us on LSM Live today. Oh, Kelly. What's up, fam? Glad you have joined us today. All right, we'll take, uh, since the answers are rolling in, we'll go ahead and take 10 more seconds to collect them.
And it was Gandalf the White. Excellent work to everyone who guessed that correctly. Um, great work to everyone who participated. Loved seeing the answers come in. If you are uh, have joined us during the midst of this game, <clears throat> excuse me, welcome to our uh, more unique laid back LSM live this week. We are going to dive in and talk about different topics and questions that you have, and we will answer them based on, excuse me, what comes through uh, to the live chat. So if you would like to uh, go ahead and take some time to uh, write your questions out, type them in the live chat, and then as they come in, we'll start talking about them um, and discussing them. Again, they can be questions about life, they can be questions about scripture, God, funny questions, topics, any number of different things, right? Like we are here to discuss what you want to today and have a little bit more interaction than we've been able to have in previous LSM live weeks. Uh, but hopefully uh, we will be able to answer some good questions. Also, just a reminder, um, if you don't follow us on social media, um, we are having a contest. So we are putting together a new LSM Spotify playlist. And we are, so we have a Spotify account. Um, I believe it's Lakewood Refuel. Yes, I always forget if it's LSM Refuel or Lakewood Refuel. But uh, we are <clears throat> putting together a new Spotify uh, playlist and we want your help. We would love for you to send us a top 10 to 20 song playlist. Uh, you can call it Corin Tunes. You can call it whatever. We're going to call our playlist the LSM Corin Tunes playlist. Uh, but we want your top 10 to 20 songs that you have been vibing to um, since quarantine and social distancing happened. And we want to create just a fire list of uh, bops and bangers. And if you send your playlist in by that's the, the car is parking and they're walking towards my house. I'll, I'll, we'll see. Um, but uh, if you send us your playlist by 11.59 on Friday, then you are eligible. You will be entered into a drawing to win a $25 gift card and a piece of our super sweet LSM swag designed by our very own LSM assistant, Kelly Strong. Uh, so make sure that you get us your playlist so you can get entered into your drawing. Let's go ahead and uh, start diving into some of these questions here. Uh, and as you as you have them, um, as you have them, feel free to put them in the chat. Uh, is life cool? Absolutely, it is. Um, especially when you get to live life for Jesus. You know, it's crazy because in John ten ten, uh, Jesus does talk about how. Um, our adversary, Satan, comes like a, a lion seeking to devour, like a thief in the night, um, trying to seek and destroy. But Jesus Christ came so that we might have life and we might have life abundantly. And so, yeah, especially with Jesus, life is awesome. Um, and it is so worth living. And it is such a great feeling to um, wake up every day, knowing that we are loved, <clears throat> excuse me, by the King of Kings and that we are uh, his children who get to make him known to the rest of the world. Uh, does pineapple belong on pizza? Uh, for fear of starting a riot in the chat, um, I am going to do what my mom probably uh, detests more than anything, which is uh, give a super long explanation that has zero opinion on it and is very diplomatic. Uh, so I am going to say this, that I personally choose not to have pineapple on my pizza, but I understand why people would enjoy pineapple on their pizza. Um, and so I believe that because Jesus Christ has set us free and we live in the freest nation on earth on a scale of one to 10, how free are we? 1776, baby. Uh, you can put whatever you want on your pizza. So go ahead and eat it that way. I won't judge you. Other people probably will though. Hopefully that answers your question, Ella. Um, uh, Colton, Burroughs to the Bengals, are they going all the way in 2020? Uh, unfortunately, I don't know if the Cincinnati Bengals will ever make it to the Super Bowl ever again. Uh, but I do know that my boy, Joe Burrow, uh, oh, legend from the LSU community, uh, is going to do a great thing for 
uh, that team. So super excited to see how he plays uh, football. Uh, let's see here. Uh, did I do anything special for uh, my birthday? I did get to, I had some steak and I had some pizza. And I actually did get to see a number of our students. Um, thank you to all of you who came and chalked my driveway or <clears throat> drove by my house and said hi to me. You know, that is, uh, I, I was a little late to the game, but I really did, uh, I had a great day because a lot of you as students got to make it a great day. Um, and just knowing that, you know, probably the hardest part of quarantine uh, so far and having to do youth group from my house has just not, or has been not being able to see you guys. And so to be able to, uh, even if it was from six, 10, 20 feet away, uh, being able to see any number of you was so life-giving and I was, oh man, that was the best. So um, thank you so much to all of you students who made that a really incredible day. Uh, shout out to my mom and sister too for making some, uh, and Katie Sawyer too for making some really fly desserts and uh, and just spending some good time uh, with me. So I appreciate all of you guys for that. Uh, let's see here. Oh man, go ahead. Uh, we can keep typing questions in uh, the comments section of the live chat. Whatever kinds of questions you have uh, related to scripture, related to um, God, life, any number of different things. One of the, uh, as we're waiting for those questions to come in though, <clears throat> one of the uh, scriptures that I was reading through, and it's, you know, it's a common one. I, I read through it a lot, but you know, the crazy part is about God's word because God is infinite and he is um, just this amazing artist and author and creator. And so because of that, uh, you can read scripture an infinite amount of times and gain new insight and gain new refreshment from it. And I think that that is so cool uh, that you can you don't just stop reading scripture or you don't just stop getting stuff out of scripture and so uh to be able to read it multiple times to get a new kind of refreshment and excitement out of it but also to gain new insights is a really cool thing um and i am going to go ahead romans one a lot of you are super familiar with it uh just because Romans 1.16 is kind of the anthem for millennials and Gen Z when it comes to the Christian uh, hip-hop and rap game. But uh, just some of the, the passages in here, excuse me, it took me a little longer than I thought to get there. Um, <clears throat> but just some of the, the ways that this, uh, that Paul writes in this is just incredible. Um, so this, we're diving into Romans one. Uh, 16 and we'll just go from there <laughs> for I am not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes to the Jew first and also to the Greek right nobody's exempt from God's salvation and so why should we be ashamed of it for in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith as it is written the righteous shall live by faith right God's righteousness was what qualified us and cleaned us up to be forgiven of our sins. And when we have faith in that truth, we get to be forgiven. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. For what can be known about God is plain to them because, or because God has shown it to him. Keep attention to this verse. This is verse, uh, Romans 1.20. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made, so they are without excuse. For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking and their foolish hearts were darkened. Uh, their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal men and birds and animals and creeping things. And so Romans one twenty, right? One of the uh, 
just my all-time favorite verses, right? The invisible qualities of God are made visible in his creation. And that is, that's a verse that Herb Bloomquist and I like, uh, like to talk about a lot. And it's just crazy, right? Because you and I are image bearers. We are cr the pinnacle of creation of this beautiful artwork um, that God created. And we are, we are the masterpieces of that. And so the invisible qualities of God get to be made known through us and through the rest of creation. And the crazy reality in it is that God shows people who don't know him everything about him, right? He makes all of him, he makes himself known to people through his creation, whether that's the beauty of the trees and the skies, the songs of the birds and the mountains shaking and trembling at the praise of our Lord in us as well, right? Like God makes himself known through all of creation and he, he, people sometimes don't see that, right? And so they trade off, you know, think of how many people worship Mother Earth, they worship any number of different things aside from another religion. And so, but just to know that we as image bearers of God are a huge part of God making himself known to the world like that is just a cool thing. And like, it's not even, it doesn't even have to do with our words. Words are incredibly important as we share the gospel, as we speak life and hope into the lives of other people, but God can use whatever he wants and needs out of us in order to make himself known. And I just think, oh, that is incredible. Uh, Molly Cartwright asks, what is your favorite verse? And one of my uh, absolute favorite passages of scripture is Romans 5, uh, 1 through 11. And that is uh, Romans, it basically discusses um, how we are justified by our faith in Jesus Christ. And so uh, it goes on from there, right? So we have obtained justification by faith um, so that when we endure trials, trials produce endurance, endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame because of the love of God that has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. And so to know that our justification is found in Jesus Christ, and because we are saved, because we are made right before God, we can endure any number of different trials um, because we know that trials test our faith, they grow us into the men and women that God calls us to be, and then we get to go further and spread hope, speak life, share the gospel um, with so many different people. And then verses 6 through 11 just go ahead and, and they go on to talk about um, all of the different ways that we messed up and yet God loves us anyways. Um, even though we were uh, still enemies with God, we have been justified by the blood of his son is Romans 5, uh, 10. And so I just, yeah, it is just an incredible passage of scripture. So I really... Um, yeah, I really love it a lot. I also really, um, 1 Thessalonians 2 is another huge one. Uh, verse uh, 18 is, or excuse me, uh, 1 Thessalonians 2, 8 is, uh, for we loved you so much that we were not only excited to share the gospel, but our lives with you as well. And so, and that's, I mean, that's what we try to do at LSM. Like that's what kind of, it's one of the verses that our lifeguards live by is we're not just excited to share the gospel with you, but we're excited to live life with you as students as well. Um, so the, yeah, I would say those are probably some of my favorite passages of scripture. Hopefully that answers uh, some of your questions. Um, Ryan asks, are we alone in the universe? And, uh, you know, as far as, I think there's kind of a two-pronged answer to that. Um, you know, the the one that I think is the most important and it probably sounds like a Jesus juke answer. So I apologize for that. But, um, but you know, with, with Christ, we're never alone, right? Um, God is, he promises to never leave us nor forsake us. Uh, the indwelling of the Holy spirit in our hearts, uh, means that we're never alone. And so in that capacity, uh, we can never be alone in this universe, and that is such a reassuring thing, especially for hyper-extroverted people like myself. Um, as far as uh, life and extraterrestrials, I don't really know. I know a lot of people think Area 51 is filled with aliens. It's not. Uh, I, I promise. Like, Area 51 is part of Nellis Air Force Base. 
which is where we do all of our secret testing of weapons and planes and boats and stuff like that. So we really just do a lot of secret weapons projects there. That's why everybody thinks that it, there's aliens. But um, I don't necessarily know. I don't personally think so, but I could be very wrong. I'm wrong about a lot of stuff. <laughs> so um, I've heard a lot of people talking about Bible verses in Second Chronicles about God sending locusts and how it relates to COVID-19. What are your thoughts about that? Ella, great question. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I, I do know what verse you're talking about. Um, it talks about how God is sending uh, judgment on the people through la or wildfires, uh, locusts, and plagues. Um, and so all of a sudden, right, like a lot of what we've seen in 2020 uh, has been very eerily similar to that. Um, you know, we had the the wildfires in Australia, we had the locusts eating up tons of crops uh, around the world and causing kind of a really weird widespread drought, if you will. And then of course, we're now in the midst of, uh, of COVID-19. And I think I'm gonna, I guess, be very careful about this because, you know, Timothy says that all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, um, among other things. And so I do think, you know, it's never by accident that there is applicable scripture to every single part of our lives, right? And even in the most random scenarios, there are tons of scriptures that, that God uses to speak into those situations. Um, to draw a literal comparison to both of them may or may not be a stretch i don't know but i think the most important part is that what comes after right so god judges the nations but if my people repent i will bring prosperity to the land and god is on this redemption mission to to make himself known to the world to through us, share the gospel to see lives radically transformed by Jesus Christ. We know that we live in an incredibly sinful, broken world, and it is, it's messy, right? And we deal with just a ton of, of different stuff that as Christians, we tend to find appalling. And so, God is always looking for repentance, right? For we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. No one is righteous, not even one. There are a ton of passages in scripture about um, basically how when people turn their eye, and we can see it all throughout scripture with the Israelites and with even, even Christians, right? They turn their eyes away from Jesus and they give in to their sinful, broken human nature. And there are consequences to that. And so I do believe that there is some merit in the reality that, yeah, God, God often does judge his people. God does often use suffering and other things like this to draw us closer to him, to help us repent and to um, be holy as God is holy, right? I mean, that's the point. We're trying to pursue holiness. We're trying to uh, bear the image of God that we were created in respectfully. And properly and so I believe that absolutely there's some there's some merit to it but we just like with revelation right I try to tell all of you as students don't don't do too much in drawing literal conclusions when there are bigger applications to both your life and to the world um, what's your opinion on Boris Yeltsin uh, um, I don't know if I necessarily have an opinion on good old Boris. Uh, I don't even, I don't know how long he was even in power uh, by the time I was alive and born. So, uh, yeah, I'm very indifferent to him. He's got a sweet name, though, Boris Yeltsin. I just think, like, all Russians have really cool names. And, like, not gonna lie, like, people think it's a stereotype that they wrestle bears. But I know a lot of people who know a lot of Russians who actually do that for fun. And so I think that's a really sweet reality stereotype. So, um, 
Kate asks, are you going to speak at camp this year? Um, you know, depending on, I, the quick answer is uh, yes, provided that uh, we do have summer camps. Obviously, I know that Herb and his team are going to uh, do an incredible work in trying to make sure that, A, we honor the authorities of Minnesota's um, state and government, and then, of course, our national government. Um, but I do know that they would love to be able to host summer camp this year. I know that we're, for LSM, looking forward to uh, to having summer programming. Uh, we're still kind of continuing forward, of course, being safe and cautious and, and keeping all of this stuff in mind. Uh, but if we do have summer camp, yes, I will be speaking at it. And I'm very thankful uh, for the opportunity to speak at camp again this year. It's not something that I, I take lightly. It's quite an honor. Um, so yes, Ellie Young, thanks for putting uh, that Second Chronicles passage in. I'm going to go ahead and zoom over to that one. That's not where I'm supposed to go. <laughs> um, Second Chronicles 7, verses 13 through 15. When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain or command the locusts to devour the land or send pestilence among my people, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and churn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayer that is made um, in this place. So, uh, yeah, and you know, so A, I am just kind of trying to slowly scan here too, uh, because this is a part of, um, this is a part of Solomon's life. And it is important, you know, right? We take chunks of scripture and without, and we, we're all guilty of this, right? Like, I'm not going to sit here and say that it's a small group of people. Like, I do it once in a while, too. Um, but we take these small passages of scripture and we just say, oh, that's what's trying to happen or that's, that's going on right now. And what's really important, I think we talk about this in Sunday school, every once in a while we talk about it on Wednesday nights, it's so important not just to examine the one or two verses, but to examine the entire context of the passage of scripture that we're reading. Um, this is an opportunity for us to be able to see, right? Because taking those three verses, yes, it's applicable, but is there a greater story that God is trying to tell us? And the other point that I did want to make um, as far as uh, this passage is concerned, right? Um, if my people humble themselves, if they pray, this is why I always want to encourage um, our students, myself, our lifeguards, any number of, and families to get on their knees and pray, but to also be the hands that pick up their neighbor, right? Six feet apart, of course. I'm just kidding. But this is an incredible opportunity for us to humble ourselves and be the church in ways that we can't overcomplicate. Um, we oftentimes, and like everyone does it too, right? Like when I, when I make these kind of more overarching ballpark statements, it's not to, uh, not to point fingers, but to just say, we, we do this as a group of Christians, right? We overcomplicate things and we do it all the time. It's crazy. And so oftentimes what we do is we try to overcomplicate what it means to be a Christian. And in reality, it's love God, love people, share the gospel, make disciples, right? Like, and yes, of course we can expound on that and we can um, do any number of things, but like this is our opportunity right now to not overcomplicate what it means to love our neighbors in the midst of COVID-19. And I think that's a huge part of praying and humbling ourselves and seeking God's face. Um, because if the invisible qualities of God are made known in his creation, then we are the, we have the opportunity to be the reason that somebody sees God's face. Uh, let's go ahead. Are you just talking to a camera in there or did you put your photo of Rush Limbaugh there so you're looking at him? Oh, <laughs> uh, that is, um, I am just talking, so we have uh, a sweet, I'll actually turn it around here without, uh, so we are using a platform called OBS Studios that is linked to, uh, to my iPhone. And so we are, um, 
we are basically, yeah, I'm streaming through my, my phone camera into my computer, which goes into our YouTube feed. So that's what we're doing. I am not, I, I have been tempted to, uh, I have been tempted to put faces of each of our small groups in uh, our wall space just for fun. Uh, kind of, we've seen churches post the members of the congregations in churches, and so I think it might be kind of fun to have your faces um, on on a Wednesday night. I don't know, it'd probably be a little bit weird. I don't really care. I'm a weird human being. Um, but uh, no, and that picture of Rush Limbaugh is not is not mine. I promise. It's. Uh, it's one of my roommates, uh, and currently, I don't know where it is. I can't remember if it's on the fridge or in the fridge, but quarantine's getting the best of us, so. Uh, mm, is water wet? Great question, Caleb. I uh, would love to um, answer that question for you, and it's a, kind of, a, again, a multi-step answer. Uh, is water wet? Well, independently, right? So let's say you have one water molecule, right? Because what is what is wet? Wet is being covered in water, right? So if I dip my hand in the sink or dip my hand in the pool and there's water on my arm, my arm is wet. However, an individual molecule of water is just a molecule of water, just like this giraffe is just a giraffe, or this cup is just a cup, right? It's just an independent thing. Now, if that independent water molecule can't be wet because it's not covered in water, but if it's covered or surrounded by other water molecules, then it's wet. So no, inherently, water is not wet, but water can be wet if it's surrounded by more water. Bet you didn't think you were gonna get some uh, some science and chemistry uh, chat here in uh, in LSM live. Uh, Joshua, yes, I totally agree. Um, been meaning to connect with Molly to talk about doing uh, some zooms for FCA, and uh, I apologize for not getting on that a little bit sooner. Uh, but would love to, yes, be able to join those and thank you so much molly for uh for leading those i would love to say i'm surprised i'm not our students rock you rock and so thank you so much for uh for making that a reality all of the question marks that are in this chat right now are just like what is jordan talking about oh um oh man Yes, chemistry lessons with Jordan. I, Chris Hansen, if you're watching this, and Kirk Lienfelter, if you're watching this, I hope you're proud. Uh, I did pay attention in uh, in chemistry class, although my uh, 11th grade chemistry teacher was from North Dakota. Um, he actually, his claim to fame was he was Jimmy Kleinsaucer, if you are a parent or guardian who knows who that is. Uh, he was Jimmy Kleinsaucer's football referee, and... Uh, dude talked about North Dakota State all the time. And so, uh, Mr. Mostad, if you're watching this, go South Dakota State. <laughs> um, we'll go ahead and we'll take, uh, we'll take questions for the next like five or so minutes. So if you have any uh, questions, feel free to ask them before uh, we get done here. And then I will go ahead and I want to make sure that we talk about um, a couple of different things we dive into a little bit more scripture, and then we pray. Uh, so if you have any more questions, we'll take them for about five minutes or so, and uh, we'll get going from there. Uh, thank you to the 25 people who are watching right now. Super excited that you're joining us again. Uh, let me go ahead, and as you're coming up with your sweet questions, uh, I will go ahead and pull up to... Where are you? <laughs> Uh, so Philippians 1, and I know we've talked about this scripture in, uh, in LSM before, uh, but one of the, again, just talking about different ways where we read scripture and we gain, uh, we gain new insights from it. 
uh, every single time we read it or it refreshes our souls in a unique way. And one of my, uh, one of my all time favorite verses in Philippians actually comes right at the very beginning of the book. So, uh, you know, pretty much every time Paul, uh, writes a letter, he usually has an intro to it. So he's like, Hey, um, hi, I'm Paul. If you ever watch Jimmy Neutron, um, but, uh, then he'll, he'll introduce himself. He'll say hi to the church that he's writing to. But then he goes and he starts diving into scripture. <clears throat> and this is what Philippians 1, 3 says. And I just think this is awesome, right? I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you, all making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. All right, that's just a small, and again, we... Uh, talking about taking it all in context, uh, this is just an opportunity for Paul to thank the Philippians for uh, their faithful commitment to the gospel. But I just think like, what a cool verse, verse uh, one, chapter one, verse three of Philippians, right? I thank my God in all my remembrance of you. Every time I think of you, I just am like, cool God, thanks for them. And like, how often do we have people in our lives that we appreciate, right? And Paul did too. Paul appreciated the Philippians church. I'm sure he appreciated a ton of people as he was doing his ministry work and his missionary journeys. But just to be able to say, God, thanks for putting that person in my life. Um, and I know I do that all the time. I think about, you know, Dave Bostrom, obviously, as my mentor and role model. I think about or I think about and, and thank God for different people at our church. I thank God for every single one of the students and lifeguards that we have. I mean, seriously, like, there's so many people to be thankful for, and it's just right there, and I love it. So uh, let's go ahead. We have a couple more questions that we can answer here. Um, what's your favorite restaurant? Mm, that's a tough one. Uh here, I like to go to breakfast at Sawmill Inn. Shout out to the Gaminders. Uh, yeah, Al makes the best breakfast in the entire town. Um, as far as uh, going on a regular basis, I really like Applebee's a lot. I like Culver's a lot. Um, but if I had to choose my all-time favorite restaurant, I like a lot of like I like a lot of the smaller like smaller chains. And so like everywhere I've been to, I can have a favorite restaurant in the town. So it's hard to choose kind of just one. Uh, I just, I just really like eating at the state fair. Like if, if my, the state fair is my favorite restaurant, I'll eat 10,000 calories and uh, call it good for the rest of the week. Um, uh, what team do you think Tua is going to? I think he's going to the Miami Dolphins. Uh, have zero, zero basis for that answer, Joshua, but that's who I think he's going to. Um, I'm just pumped that my boy Joe Burrow from LSU, national champions, baby, uh, gets to go number one overall, hopefully. Uh, what do you think of Billie Eilish? She has very interesting hair. Um, I don't, I don't really like, I have listened to her music because obviously she's super popular with students, but I can't understand half of what she's saying. It's kind of like mumble rap. I'm like, what are you doing? Um, so yeah, but I know that she is uh, just like all of us made in the image of the living God and she is dearly loved by our creator. And I just pray that she uh, hears and receives the gospel eventually, so. Um, with the world becoming a lot more accepting uh, to many things that the Bible may say is wrong, how can we as Christians stay steadfast to what scripture says? Ah, Colton, thank you. Uh, so yeah, obviously we live in a world and it says in scripture, right? Like generations grow up not knowing the Lord. Uh, people start to believe that what is good is evil and evil is good, right? Like we can very clearly see that it's not like this should come as a surprise to us that our culture uh, dismisses Christianity and goes towards 
all of these different things. Excuse me. Um, I think it's super important, you know, um, as to, to answer your questions, how can we stay steadfast with what scripture says? I think it's always important to, uh, to come forward with a humble heart to all of these different questions, right? Or these different uh, oppositions to scripture and to Christianity. Um, and to make sure that you know what God's word says so that you can test it against the different uh, things that go on, right? If you, if you have no idea what God's guidebook says, if you have no idea what the lamp unto your feet is, like if you have no lamp, how are you gonna walk the dark path? If you uh, don't have a sword, how are you going to defend yourself from the lion? And so, like, you have to know what is in God's word in order to say, you know what, what you're saying doesn't match up with God's word, right? Um, I'll give you an example. Uh, so when I was a younger believer, kind of before I got my um, call in the ministry, I used to, you know, we obviously homosexuality and um, any, everything like that is kind of a hot button issue um, in, uh, in our culture, right? And especially with Christians. And I used to believe that the Bible didn't say anything inherently about homosexuality, but I did believe that traditional marriage was the only and right path because that was God's design. But in reality, right, like there's tons of scripture about that. Just like there's also scripture, you know, people talk about how Leviticus is just this laundry list of rules, right, to, um, oh gosh, like how can, you, and they take all of these rules and these things out of context. Leviticus also says, wash your hands before you eat. And, uh, oh, hey, you shouldn't eat pork because it's a dirty animal, but think about the ability they had to cook back in ancient Israel. Like, God's setting up protective, protective measures for us uh, long before uh, we even knew any better. And so, um, but yeah, know what scripture says so that you can test it against stuff, but also be willing to have a humble heart to say, you know what? Even if I don't know the proper answer to it, can I take some time to go find the answer for you, right? Because then what you're doing is you're also providing yourself an outlet to go back to scripture and to go back to what God's word says. And then you can find the answer in scripture because I'll bet you dollars to donuts that God's answer to all of your questions is found in this book. Like every question you have, there's probably a scripture for it. Um, hopefully that is helpful. Um, yeah, I like to, you know, we talk about the Bible being the sword of the spirit. I love calling it the sword of the spirit because I like to cut stuff. So, or like, if you really want to modernize it, like call this the assault rifle of the Holy Spirit. You know, every verse is, uh, is a clip and I'm just mowing down my idols and mowing down Satan. Uh, with uh, with what this good book says. So uh, that being said, hope that uh, all of you have had a fantastic time here on LSM Live. I want to take some time to pray for us. And then I also want to uh, just give you a couple of quick announcements here. Uh, but let me go ahead real quick. I want to end by just reading First Timothy 4. I, I love this verse, right? This is the this is the mantra to LSM um, because I really do believe it. First Timothy four, twelve. Let no one despise you for your youth, but set the believers an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. Right? You are a generation that everyone gets so excited about. We truly believe that revival and the gospel movement is going to be so thriving and alive with all of you students and so constantly reminding you that yes absolutely you have a lot to learn and you have a lot of growing to do just like all of us um but also to uh to just be able to uh remind you that you just because you're young doesn't mean that god can't use you you have a very valuable purpose and a great big um opportunity to uh make a difference for his kingdom so uh, that being said, I am going to 
I, I am going to pray for us here, and then we will, uh, we will get going. But will you pray with me, please? Awesome, God. I just want to thank you so much uh, for the opportunity to gather with you uh, and gather with these students to worship you, um, our creator, our king, our loving father, and our savior. God, would you please uh, remind us each and every single day uh, just of the great and glorious calling that you have on our lives, to love you, to love others, to share the gospel, to make disciples um, in the way that you have uniquely designed for us. God, every single person's calling is the same, but the way that they are called and the way that it looks for them living out that calling is different and it's creative. It is made by an artist, you. Lord, thank you so much for uh, just the positive news that we have been hearing about COVID in the recent couple of days, uh, just with the way that um, science and testing and all of this different stuff has uh, just been pointed to the fact that there is a light at the end of the tunnel, and that light is because of you, Lord, that you have safely guided us um, and are continuing to guide us through this. We know that it's not done yet, but Lord, we know that um, your hand is upon this, just like it is with everything else. And so, Lord, would you um, continue to uh, remind us of your faithfulness? Would we continue to put our trust in you, the holy and amazing and loving God? Lord, would you um, please uh, just give us the opportunity to... Uh, would you give us the opportunity to love others in your name would you give us the opportunity to uh, make you known the invisible qualities of god made known in us your creation so that we can uh humble our hearts seek our face get on our knees and pray and just like it says in uh, second chronicles just like it says in jeremiah um 29 13 if we seek you with our whole f or we seek you with everything we have then we shall find you. And Lord, I just pray that for all of these students. I pray that for all of these parents. Lord, would you uh, just remind us of your goodness every day. Help us to follow you. We love you, we praise you, and we give you the glory. In your precious name, amen. Thank you again for joining us for LSM Live. Uh, just a reminder, right, if you want to be entered into the drawing to win a $25 gift card and a piece of our sweet LSM swag, um, uh, go ahead and send us your top 10 to 20 uh, songs for the COVID quarantunes uh, playlist that we're making for LSM. I uh, would love for you to join that and then stay tuned too. If you are planning on being on one of our summer uh, missions teams, going to challenge, anything like that, uh, we are continuing to plan for those. Of course, trying to be safe and do um, any number of different things uh, to be smart about that, but we are still proceeding with them. So get excited for when it's going to be a fantastic summer. Uh, I love you guys. God loves you. We're so excited that you're here or that you joined us today. Have a wonderful rest of your night.